B-Link's previous GTI 14 Ultra Mini PC was something radically different from the norm and featured a full-sized PCIe slot, which when combined with a dock allowed you to add a desktop graphics card for a powerful desktop combo. And now we're checking out the successor, the GTI 15 Ultra. The sleek metal case returns and port selection is similar with some changes, which we'll get into shortly. Of course, the biggest change is a CPU. This time it's Intel's Core Ultra 9 285H, the current flagship with decent integrated graphics. So how much does B-Link's GTI 15 Ultra cost? Well, the 1TB SSD 64GB DDR5 model hits $1200 US dollars. Double RAM and storage for an extra $200. If you want the EX Pro Dock, which makes use of the PCIe slot and is made especially for the B-Link GTI Minis that support it, you will need to throw in an extra $179 US dollars. Obviously not cheap, but this mini PC has a lot of features you don't see very often, such as the fingerprint sensor on the power button. Next to it is a 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C 10 gigabit, data transfer only, a full sized SD card slot, and a USB Type-A 10 gigabit. See those four holes above? That's the microphone array, which sounds like this. Not too bad, and includes noise reduction. The stereo speaker is small inside the mini PC, and sounds a bit tinny. All the sound comes from under the unit, so it's not the best placement. As you'd hope for the price, B-Link has thrown in a Wi-Fi 7 chip for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has the AC power input. There's a USB 4 40 gigabit port, which does power on the Mini with a USB-C monitor. Another 3.5mm audio jack, which also has a CMOS reset inside it. There's also HDMI, DisplayPort, and dual 10 gigabit LAN, which is a huge upgrade from the dual 2.5 gigabit in the previous unit. However, the GTI 15 Ultra drops two USB Type-A ports, which were above the LAN ports on the GTI 14 Ultra. And last but not least, we have a couple of USB Type-A 10 gigabit. There's not much else included in the box, just a HDMI and power cable. This mini doesn't come with an external power brick, since it uses an inbuilt 145 watt power supply. Opening up B-Link's GTI 15 Ultra is the same as the 14 annoying and time consuming. First off, we have glued on rubber feet to pluck out, then plenty of screws, starting with four for the lid. Then the screws holding the dust plate. Unscrew the speaker and the inbuilt power supply. Next, the screws for the cooling plate. Finally, there's the standoff on the side. And if you don't have a toolkit capable of removing it, your SOL. I guess pliers would work if you don't mind some cosmetic damage on the standoff. Once the cooling plate is removed, underneath you'll find dual 2280 M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slots and in this case, 64GB of crucial DDR5 5600 RAM. The maximum DDR5 support for Intel's 285H is 6400. Finally, we have the PCIe Gen 5 X8 slot if you're going to be using B-Link's EX dock. This is equivalent to a Gen 4 X16 slot. To use it, you'll only need to remove the rubber cover on the lid, which makes it easy. Included with the GTI 15 Ultra is Windows 11 Pro, and just like the previous B-Link Mini we looked at, there's a bunch of software we didn't ask for, including the control center, which is still in beta. You can add your webcam to it if you have one, and use the various visual effects. You can also change your monitor display settings from Windows and adjust the performance mode of the mini PC. The other software is eDrawMind, eDrawMax, and Filmora. I wouldn't use them, but hey, I don't judge. Since there's some decent performance and a lot of RAM with the GTI 15 Ultra, you can deploy an LLM and do some of that AI from your mini PC. You can also use Ubuntu no problem, even the 10 gigabit LAN jacks worked fine. The benchmarks have changed a bit since the GTI 14 Ultra was released, but we'll work with the data we have and see how the 15 compares to other minis with the same CPU. 
Interestingly, while single core Cinebench is in the top three, it is lower than the other two Core Ultra 9 minis we've looked at previously. With performance mode and C states enabled, the score is good. Don't ask me why C states isn't enabled. I lost my mind trying to figure out why a long time ago. Taking the best GTI 15 score against the best score out there, Yasus NARC 15 Pro Plus is almost 3% ahead. Multicore is interesting. b -Link's unit easily beats the Geekom IT15, but the GTI 15 Ultra only matches the default configuration of the NUC 15 Pro Plus when performance mode is enabled. Geekbench Single Core is again slightly behind the other two minis with the same CPU, while in performance mode and C states enabled, it's close to the best result. With Arrow Lake, Intel has regained the single core performance crown. Just. In Geekbench Multicore, the GTI 15 Ultra takes the win in performance mode as the fastest mini PC. Impressive. The short H.264 video encoding test has the GTI 15 Ultra as the second best Intel Mini, and in the much longer AV1 encoding benchmark, it manages to take the top Intel spot when using performance mode. Next, we offload the toughest parts of the AV1 encode to the iGPU, and that way, the GTI 15 Ultra is easily the winner. I suspect there was an unoptimized GPU driver at launch, which gave the lower result we see with the ASUS NUC 15 Pro Plus. Geekbench AI CPU has the GTI 15 Ultra as the second best Intel Mini. Same test on the iGPU shows a less impressive result. Integrated graphics performance is lower than expected. The GTI 15 Ultra trails the ASUS NUC 15 Pro Plus result substantially, and the performance mode didn't help things either. TimeSpy also shows it behind both minis with the same CPU, and we can also see the same result in Steel Nomad Lite. While the ASUS NUC had the faster C-Sodium RAM, the Geekom had DDR5 5600, and it still beats it. The 3D Mark numbers didn't make sense to me, so I put the GTI 15 Ultra side by side with the Geekom IT15, and you can see the opposite is true. Maybe Intel has stopped cooking the 3D Mark numbers with newer drivers. Intel's Arc Integrated Graphics was a huge boost over XE, but still trails a lot of AMD's Radeon offerings. The 285H performs very well for most esports titles. But AAA game action is lacking. You might do okay with some games at 1080p low natively rendered, but otherwise an upscaler is needed. And you can forget playing some of the newer titles at all. Intel CPUs typically excel at emulation, and we get excellent results with a couple of emulators. I wanted to see if Xbox 360 emulation was still broken with Arc, and no, it works okay now. You can use a USB 4 eGPU, but there's no point when the specially made dock gives you a far better experience. Might as well make use of the included PCIe slot, since you're paying for it. I have a whole video on the dock that I'll link at the end. b -Link's GTI 15 Ultra performs very well at compiling code. With performance mode, it just takes the win from the Ryzen HX370 result. In Adobe Photoshop, b -Link's Mini doesn't manage to snag the win, but it is the fastest Intel Mini PC on the chart. However, in Adobe Premiere, it's a beast in performance mode, taking numero uno spot and makes for a great video editing workstation. The included Crucial SSD is fast and one of the best that we've seen. The drive temp under load was higher than expected, but didn't thermal throttle during my testing. Bluetooth range is excellent, and there were no problems with Wi-Fi at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Idle power draw with the GTI 14 Ultra was bad, and a firmware update brought it down. It was still higher than everything else. The GTI 15 Ultra is dismal at idle power draw, 
chugging 41 watts from the wall, doing absolutely nothing on the Windows desktop. Luckily, that can be improved. Enabling C states in the BIOS drops down idle power draw to 24 watts, which is much more reasonable and at least no longer broken. Please don't ask me why C states isn't enabled. I can't handle it. Oh, and just having the GTI 15 Ultra plugged into a power socket and turned off has it still using 4 watts of power, when it should be near zero. This is enough to make the case warm. Maximum power draw depends on the power mode. This mini doesn't have the crazy high power draw of the ASUS NUC 15 Pro Plus. Maximum CPU temps are pretty good, especially in 54 watt mode, which is the default out of the box. That being said, one of the most impressive features is the low fan noise. The GTI 15 Ultra is quiet all the time. Idle noise recorded up a bit over the GTI 14 Ultra, but load performance recorded slightly lower. This makes it one of, if not the quietest mini PC on the market with a 65 watt power limit. Oh, and it's a chonker of a unit, taking up almost one and a half liters in volume. The delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. First thing anyone with this mini PC should do is enable C states. Go to power and performance, CPU power management control, and scroll down to C states and enable it. Then don't forget to save and exit. If you want to increase the power limit, head to config TDP configurations, and you can set it to 65 watts over the default 54. In PCHIO, you'll find the power loss resume function. Hardware monitor allows you to change the fan curve. There are a lot of other settings, but I didn't see Wake on LAN or RAID. B-Link are one of the few companies that do BIOS updates though, so if you're interested in something that's missing, you can ask them if it's there or request to include it in a future release. All right, now for the mini PC checklist. B-Link's GTI 15 Ultra has a very nice metal case. Build quality and engineering is impressive. 1200 US dollars is pricey, even if it includes double the RAM of most configurations, and there's no bare bones option to choose from. Usually we see external power supplies, but the internal 145 watt power supply is compact and hidden inside the unit. You can't visit mount this mini PC. While it doesn't have Oculink, the PCIe slot is the best possible link for external GPUs. Seeing 10 gigabit dual LAN is pretty awesome, in a first for a mini PC like this. And just like the GTI 14 Ultra before it, the 15 is annoying and time consuming to open. Intel's 285H supports up to CSODOM DDR5 6400, but considering the cost of the memory, I'm not surprised it isn't included. While there are no viruses and malware on the OS, it does come with pre-installed apps. Load fan noise is very impressive, with the GTI 15 Ultra being quiet under load. B-Link supports their mini PCs pretty well, and the only thing that's really missing in the last column is a longer warranty. This one just has the standard 12 months. B-Link's GTI 15 Ultra mini PC gets a lot of things right. It's powerful, quiet, and even has the best option for an external GPU if that's what you're looking for. It's not perfect though, with higher idle power draw than most minis on the market and features that you may not like, such as an inbuilt power supply, fingerprint sensor, microphone, speakers, and lower iGPU performance. Overall though, a nice improvement over its predecessor and there's not a lot like it on the market. Affiliate links are in the description if you're interested. Anything purchased through them gives me a small cut at no cost to you and is how this channel has kept going. So thanks for that. I did mention I'd link the video with the GTI 14 Ultra and Doc, and you can check that out right here. Cheers.